Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of the Lord's Transfiguration. In today's Mass, we we'll praying for all of you and praying for your families, praying for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. I also invite you to bring your intentions and let us offer them together. We pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. May God who holds you by the hand, lead you and guide you, and may he bring you to the place of hope and joy and peace. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have died. We pray for those who are going through very difficult times now. We remember to pray for our country and pray for our leaders. Our opening hymn today will be How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the work thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and with your spirit. We prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are sitting at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the Father and the wonderful prefig and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is a reading from the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the ancient one took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair of his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. The surging stream of the fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended to him. The court was convened, and the book was opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man 
coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like the Son of Man received dominion, glory, and kingship. And all peoples and nations and languages served him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, the Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. Second reading, it's a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came on him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him at the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess a prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You do not, you will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up the mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, the holy bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect very briefly from the feast that we celebrate today 
and from the readings that come from that experience. I have had the very singular privilege of visiting and celebrating at the Mountain of Transfiguration twice. It's a beautiful church up on the Mountain of Transfiguration. And I just want to give thanks to 206 for making my two visits they're possible. 206 Tours is always an excellent place to call whenever you need to travel to any of these beautiful, beautiful, exciting places. And um, it's a difficult mountain to climb, honestly, even today. It is one of the most difficult places to access. So I could understand how, what a journey this must have been for the three disciples and Jesus. And from up there, you could see, you could see quite a good lot. So Jesus takes his three disciples up on this place, while the other nine were at the valley. And you remember, something was going on there while they were up on the mountain. They were battling um, a man who had brought his child, who was sick with dropsy, and was asking for them to cure him cure the child, and they were unable to do it. But in, in the meantime, Jesus was up with his disciples. And scripture tells us what happened, that his clothes became dazzling white. And then Elijah and Moses appeared to him and were conversing with him. I still wonder the nature of that conversation. Unfortunately, no one tells us what exactly they were talking about. I wish we had an idea, but we don't, and that doesn't matter. Because if it was important for us to know, if it was important for our salvation, we would know it. But I think the symbolism is far more important than whatever conversation went between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. The symbolism is to reveal to us the beauty of the old and the new. And that we of this new covenant are possessors or inheritors of this great tradition, this great heritage that we must preserve and we must preserve with everything we've got. Now, there are so many of us believers and maybe unbelievers who continue to wonder what life will be like the day we close our eyes finally on this side. We just wonder. We wonder if life is going to be the same for those who enjoy little things like gardening, like coffee in the morning, like a good cup of tea, or like just friendship. We wonder if that is still going to be the same on the other side. Now, what this experience of the transfiguration showed to these apostles, this trip, was that life on the other side is super awesome, so super wonderful, that once you even catch a glimpse of it, you don't want to live any longer. And so when Peter, James, and John caught just a glimpse of what it feels like, the beauty of what life feels like on the other side, Peter wanted that experience forever. Now, do, do you remember the, last, the first time you tasted something really, really good. You wanted more of it. You wanted to have, maybe even take it home. All right, I'm sure maybe your mom had to, had to stop you and you were crying because you just wanted it so badly to carry, to be with you and to have, to have it. Now, that's what happened here. When, when Peter and James and John had just beheld this experience, Peter wanted to stay. He says to Jesus, Lord, it's wonderful. It's wonderful that we are here. Let us build three things. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Look, this is just something I want to, I want to remain in this kind of an experience. I don't want this to pass. That's what Peter was saying to the Lord. And so if you ever wonder, or if you ever doubt what life will be like, this, thing, this, this feast just tells you there is something so much more awesome, so much more wonderful, so much more magnificent on the other side. 
And that is a blessing and inheritance that is meant for you. Jesus knows that. And he so desperately want us to be with him on the other side. That was why one of the things he asked the, asked the Father in the final prayer at John, in John's Gospel, chapter 17, was, Father, let all those you have given to me be with me where I am, that they may see the glory. That means that they may see this beauty, this super outstanding beauty that is on the other side. Let all those you have given to me, every one of them. I don't want to lose one of them. Please do whatever it takes to make sure that all those you have given to me see this. It is just too beautiful to behold alone. And so I, I hope that wherever you are and whatever you do in your life, you will do your utmost to make sure that when life, when the curtain of life closes on this other side, that you would have saved enough you would have made enough deposit to qualify to share the beauty of life on the other side. So that's the first thing I want us to think about today. The second is this. You realize while we are here, we still got work to do. Now that's what Peter was trying to forget. That while we are on this other side, we still have work to do. Peter was trying to rush to start life on the other side already. He says, let us build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Let heaven start right now. Let heaven begin today. And Jesus was like, no, <laughs> you still got work to do. There's still plenty of work to do. And there are times where we feel like that. I remember when I did my first communion, I felt like, wow, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. I wish I could just die now and just be on the other side. I'm sure you, we all had those moments where we felt that way. That was our own moment of transfiguration. Where we felt so much, we felt overwhelmed by grace. It was like, God, I wish you would just take me home right now. It feels so good. But there is still work to do. Maybe work to care for your sick mother. Or work to care for your sick dad or your old dad. Or your sick husband or your sick wife. Or maybe work to teach those children who will have to inherit this world. Or maybe work to be the police officer who makes sure our society is safe. Or maybe work to be the military officer who makes sure that the world is stable, is held together in instability. Or maybe you are the nurse or the doctor right now on the front lines of this virus. Or maybe you are the business person, you know, who is all... Um, someone with, who has a restaurant providing nourishment and food. Or maybe you are a farmer. But, but whatever you are, there is still work on the other side. And all that the Lord is asking is that we are able to manage what we do on this side just so the rewards will be given to us on the other side. So whatever you do today, remember that. So Jesus says to, Jesus says to Peter, you know, when, every, when the whole experience is over, it says, wake up, now let us go. So you realize when they went down, there was work waiting for them down there. So we pray, dear friends, that this moment we celebrate will remind us of these two very important messages. First, the beauty of life on the other side. And second, what has to be done on this other side, just so we're able to get the rewards of life on the other side. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ challenges us to exchange the material comforts of this world for the visions of the eternal banquet. Let us lift our hearts in prayer and seek his grace as we strive to listen and to please God. That our faith in the heavenly riches and blessings may free us from the attractions of this worldly obsession and that we may value the things of heaven over and above anything that this life offer us and so focus on building relationships with God with desire for the glory of heaven we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer that those blessed with wealth in this world, those blessed with opportunities in this world, that all of us may use whatever God has given to us and so may recognize the struggle of others we serve, the poor, the old, the deprived, the abused, the unloved, and seniors will live alone. And so come to their help to build a better, more hospitable world for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For soldiers and their families, especially any who at this time may be deployed in harm's way or in danger. We pray for those who are on the front lines of this virus, our doctors, our nurses, our emergency responders, our police, and all those who have put their lives on the line as we battle together against this one enemy. That God may shield and protect them. And that God may grant victory as we battle. And that God may make sure that everyone is safe in this fight, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the tragedies caused by nature or by human cruelty, especially the sad event that just happened with this hurricane and the explosion that happened in Lebanon, That God may touch our hearts and touch the hearts of everyone who can and who has the ability to rise to the challenge and so bring support to victims and all those who may have lost their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers and for those who are worshipping at this time with us here, that we may walk daily to create an environment where everyone feels valued and respected and where everyone realizes that the success of our common mission depends on what we all do responsibly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. And ask for those who need special prayers, especially those whose families are in very serious crisis. Pray for children who are caught in the middle. Pray and ask that God may wed into these families and these situations and find them peace and respite. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, hear these concerns we have brought before you. Kindly accept and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily, that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the power of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all those we lost during this hurricane, O oh God. Remember all those that died in Lebanon. Remember, O oh God, all who have died from this virus. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide, now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters, and take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful God, today you revealed yourself on the holy mountain and displayed the glory and the majesty that you share with the Father. As your sons and daughters around the world still desire to participate in that wonderful communion, that are only able to do so because of this virus. They desire you. So we beg you, dear God, that from this altar, they may receive the full nourishment they desire and ask in, your, in their spirits, in their souls, and in their minds, that they both fall in their lives, O oh God, that you may be the fullness of everything they desire and seek and ask. We beg of you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received of God, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. 
before the final blessing. I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and asking God's special blessing on all of you and on all those you carry every day in your heart. I'd like to also wish you a very happy feast day. Because on this day, God says the same thing to you, whether you are a son or a daughter. He says, this is my son, this is my daughter, my beloved. So you remember what I tell you always, that you are the, be the, the beloved of the Almighty God, the delight of his heart. And that is true today, it's true tomorrow, and it was yesterday, and will be forever. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the summons. Will you come and follow me if I beg call you all Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me?